Hello, you're all right. <laughs> Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm from a lovely little place called Liverpool. Any Scousers in? <laughs> no, where are you from? <laughs> I'm not messing with him. More specifically, I'm from a, a lovely little place called Stockbridge Village. Has anyone heard of Stockbridge? <laughs> For anyone who knows Stockbridge Village, you'll know that this is like Live Aid to me. So, uh... <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know Stockbridge, it's like that TV show Midsummer, but with a lot more murders. So. <laughs> but I'm going to start with a little tune. This is a, a lovely little ballad called Bedroom Window. It goes like this. Every night I climbed in through your bedroom window. How was I supposed to know that you'd fucking moved house? Thank you. <laughs> it's not often they have a professional musician in here, to be honest with you. Um, I'd just like to dedicate that one to me nan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know she'll be looking down tonight. Um, she's a hang gliding instructor. <laughs> no, she's dead, she's dead. <laughs> Um, but my nan gave me something uh, very special that I carry around with me every single day. It's really hard to talk about this um, because I haven't really written it properly. <laughs> <coughs> no, my nan, uh, my nan gave me the pen that I write my material with. Uh, she couldn't be asked sorting out any life insurance, so she left me. <laughs> she left me the free pack of pens she got for inquiring. So. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nan. <laughs> I'm really sorry to say my granddad, he, uh, he's still with us. Um, <laughs> no, he's a great guy, my granddad, but my granddad, he doesn't think like the rest of us. He's got a very strange logic that he uses that's very unique to him. I'll give you an example. I was in my granddad's when I was a kid, and um, he said to me, Johnny, come into the kitchen. And I was like, why? He said, come into the kitchen. It's not that sinister, you can smile. <laughs> that was my other granddad. <laughs> and he didn't even have a kitchen. <laughs> Nobody said, Johnny, come into the kitchen. So I went into the kitchen and I said, what's up? He said, you've spilled Pepsi under the fridge. I said, I haven't spilled Pepsi under the fridge. And my granddad said, you've spilled Pepsi under the fridge. <laughs> I said, I haven't spilled Pepsi under the fridge. But then my granddad, he went really quiet. He, he looked at the floor. He thought for a second and he slowly looked up. He looked straight into my eyes. And he said something I'll never forget. He said, you have spilled Pepsi in the <laughs> And I said, listen, I haven't spilled Pepsi under the fridge. And then I said, I said, hang on, there is no Pepsi. <laughs> and this is where my granddad's logic comes in. My granddad said, yeah, there's no Pepsi because you've spilled it under the fridge. <laughs> That's a true story, that. <laughs> but occasionally, um, my granddad comes out with great one-liners. He made a cuppa for my mum years ago, and she dropped the phone in it. And my granddad just looked up instantly and said, T-Mobile. <laughs> Has anyone got a mobile phone? Yeah. See, I know, I know where things are at. Do you know, I'm with Virgin Mobile, and uh, my phone signal where I live is like a step down from two cups and a piece of string, seriously. <laughs> and uh, 
I was watching Top of the Pops 2 just before Christmas and Lionel Richie was on the video. Do you remember Hello? Where he's on the phone. And I thought, imagine Lionel Richie's Hello if he'd been on Virgin Mobile <laughs> living in Stockbridge Village. <laughs> it sounds something like this. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you there, Dave? <laughs> Dave. <laughs> it's Lionel. <laughs> Dave. That's all I've got on that. <laughs> yeah, but as a songwriter, I've written songs for many people you might have heard of. Has anyone heard of Jamelia? Yeah. yeah. Charlotte Church. Yeah. yeah. Lamar. Yeah. Katy Perry. Yeah. Britney Spears. <laughs> Beyonce. <laughs> you see, I've written songs for all of these people. You know, they didn't use them. <laughs> but I wrote them. Because what I've realized is, say if you want to write a song for Beyonce, she can't really stop you. <laughs> <clears throat> it's true, isn't it? But the thing is, what's really sad is when you write a song for an artist, you get no response, and then they rob your idea. A couple of years ago, I sent her a little demo of a lovely track to Lady Gaga called Poke Her Face. <laughs> no response whatsoever. It's a tough world we live in. Anyway, Eurovision. <clears throat> Eurovision is one of the musical sort of things where I think I could really succeed. Basically because they let fucking anyone have a go. <laughs> And uh, I've written a little Eurovision song, and uh, my mate said he thinks the lyrics are a bit dodgy, but, you know, let's see what you think. You'll be singing this tomorrow. It goes like this. It's very Christmassy. I'm gonna cut your head off. I'm going to end your life I'm going to cut your head off With my new Swiss army knife Everybody I'm going to cut your head off I'm going to end your life You know it better than I do I'm going to cut your head off With my new Swiss army knife and here's the verse. It goes like this. You pissed me off one time too many. So I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to leave your bloody beheaded body underneath the bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to cut your head off. Come on. I'm going to end your life. I'm going to cut your head off. Big finish with my new Swiss Army knife. Thank you very, very much. Have a great night.